Take a look at this. I've got a light source here, and then I've got a polarizer in front of it. And then over here, I've got another polarizer, and these are oriented 90 degrees to each other. They're crossed, meaning that very little light gets through the pair. But because they're imperfect, even at 90 degrees, a small amount of light will leak through if it's very bright. Okay, to this, I'm going to add a beaker of olive oil, and then I'm going to put into the beaker a coil of copper wire, it's a few thousand turns of copper wire, and I'm going to lower this down in here so that the, we can look down the bore. Okay, so now I'm going to move the camera down to benchtop level so that we're looking through the polarizer, through the coil, and then through the other polarizer, and I'm going to control the power through the coil with this switch. Crazy, right? Did you expect that to happen? I actually had no idea the effect would be so large. So at first you might be thinking, oh, it's probably a problem with the experimental setup. Like maybe the coil is pulling something near it and it's you know causing the light to be darker. No, that's definitely not it. Uh, and then you might be thinking, well, maybe it's a liquid crystal effect. Like, you know, the, the heavy oil molecules are, you know, changing the polarization of light or something. No, that's actually not it either. It, it works just fine with plain old distilled water. Uh, it, the effect is not quite as strong as in the olive oil, but it's still there, and water is definitely not a liquid crystal. This phenomenon, called the Faraday effect, actually occurs in almost all transparent materials. And what's happening here is when there's a magnetic field uh, in the direction that the light is traveling through a substance, it rotates the polarization of the light very slightly. So if we're sending in vertically polarized light, uh, if we have a strong enough magnetic field over a big enough distance in, in the material, then we can actually rotate that field slightly. So if the two polarizers start, are 90 degrees uh, relative to each other, you know, it's very dark, almost no light is getting through. But with a small amount of rotation added in between them, we get a little bit more light through it. The effect happens in air, too. It's just that air is so much less dense than the olive oil or the water, you can't really see it. And so here's the setup with just air. As you can see, there's, there's no visual effect. Also, plain glass is not very good at this either. So here's a borosilicate capillary that I have, and I didn't polish the ends, but I don't think that matters too much. As you can see, the effect is pretty slight, but not nearly as big as the water or the olive oil. On the other hand, if we add something to the glass, this is, a, I believe, a neodymium glass laser rod. You can see the effect is uh, strong again. And just to really show that this is a magnetic effect, Here's a permanent magnet being lowered into just plain distilled water. And as you can see, when I get the magnet close, the amount of light changes. Even more interestingly, when I rotate the magnet from side to side, when the magnetic field is in the direction of the light travel, you can see that the light is affected differently when, when the magnet is rotated and is tra transverse to the light direction. Pretty cool. It even works with just a vial of water. So if I get the magnet close to the side of the vial and then pull it away and put it back, you can see the light levels changing. So what's actually going on here? Well, the hand wavy explanation is that all matter is made up of atoms which have electrons in them, and electrons being charged particles are affected by magnetic fields. So that when an incoming photon interacts with those electrons in the matter, if it's in a very strong magnetic field, everything is going to be affected, and there you go. Uh, unfortunately, the complete description is fairly difficult and beyond the scope of this video, but I will put links in the description for those interested. If you're interested in playing with this yourself, I have a few tips for you. First, when I uh, was looking for this effect, I used a really strong neodymium magnet and a vial of olive oil, and I tried every combination of, you know, putting this thing around and staring through it in the dark, and I couldn't get it to work. So originally, I thought that the effect was just too small to see with the naked eye. And if you look around on the net, uh, you know, most of the documentation is using photomultipliers or photodiodes, and I thought, oh, there's, you know, there's just no way you're going to see this with the eye. However, the problem is with the magnet. Uh, with a single magnet like this, uh, you'll almost never get this to work, and here's why. So this magnet uh, is north and south on the flat, on the large flat faces, and the field around the outside looks sort of something like this. So there's actually a very small region where the field lines are parallel and, and strong, so that the strength of this magnet is mostly high out near the poles here, and it's weak over here. Uh, and if you put this near a vial hoping to see the effect, you'll only get this Faraday effect when the light is traveling in the same direction as the magnetic field lines, which means only this little slice right here. And since the effect is so weak, we really need these lines to be extended over a large area to, to, to view it. 
So what I did... Okay, we're back and my fingers are okay. Uh, what I was going to say was that this magnet is configured a little differently so that the field has to come out from one side and then it travels through a longer distance here. And um, because there's north-south and then north-south again, uh, the, the shape of the magnetic field out here is much more parallel for a longer period or for a longer space. There's a really cool practical application of the Faraday effect. Let's say we have one polarizer like this and then another polarizer that is 45 degrees, not 90 degrees, twisted. And then we set up our coil with the uh, special high Faraday or high verdict constant material in there and the rotation is 45 degrees. So what will happen is the light will go through the first polarizer, so now it's just vertical polarized, and when it goes through our Faraday rotator, it's now plus 45 degrees, and when it hits this polarizer, which is at 45 degrees, you know, all of it goes through. So the whole system is as efficient as it can be. However, if you try to send light in this way, it hits this polarizer, which is plus 45, and when it goes through the Faraday rotator, instead of being reversed back to vertical, the magnetic field is now going the other direction, so instead it spins the light another 45 degrees, and now it's 90, and then when it hits this polarizer, none of it goes through, or very little goes through. Pretty weird, right? There's not too many substances that do this. In fact, you've probably never encountered one, where if you look through it, it's clear in one direction, and you look through it and it's opaque in the other direction. And in theory, you wouldn't really need a power source. You could do this with permanent magnets, even. Uh, the problem is getting 45 degrees of rotation is quite difficult. As you saw with our experiment, doing you know an amp and a half uh, with a few thousand turns is just enough to get like a couple degrees of rotation. So getting all the way to 45 degrees of rotation is not easy. The material's ability to perform this phenomenon is called the verdict constant, and it has units like uh, radians per tesla meter. So if the magnetic field is longer, then it's uh, you know bigger, and if the magnetic field is stronger, then we get more effect or the material itself can just simply have a higher constant. I haven't found a good list of verdict constants for various materials, but keep in mind that gases are almost certainly going to be less than liquids and solids. It's also easier to see this with an electromagnet anyway, because you can turn the magnet on and off without disturbing the setup, so it's easier to see the brightness change. And in this case, I'm using a solenoid. I just uh, liberated the coil from this mechanical solenoid and I believe it's about 60 ohms, as near as I can tell, maybe a few thousand turns of wire. And we're drawing, you know, about an amp and a half almost at 60 volts for this thing. So it's quite a bit of power. You can't really leave it on. But luckily, if it's submerged in water or oil anyway, you won't have any heat buildup problems. The last thing to consider is the quality of these polarizers. Um, it might work with low quality polarizers that you can get from sort of cheap, you know, kind of home science kits. I actually got these from a polarizer manufacturer and this was the most restrictive polarizer they make. So not necessarily expensive, but just very restrictive, meaning that they don't transmit a whole lot of light. As you can see, they're, they're dark. They're less than 50% transmissive, uh, but they do restrict. They have a very high extinction ratio, as it's called, meaning that when they're crossed, it's very dark. Finally, you'll have to use glass to contain the substance you want to inspect. So you'll probably laugh at me for doing this, but I made this really cool little uh, plastic olive oil container, and this actually fits down into the solenoid coil really well. And then I found out, oh yeah, I used plastic end caps on this, and guess what? The plastic randomizes the light polarization all by itself. So you can't use a plastic container because it's going to ruin the polarization and the, the whole thing just won't work. But wait, there's more. You might be thinking, well, if a magnetic field affects a transparent substance, what about reflections? And yeah, it's true, actually. So if you have you know, a reflective substance in a magnetic field and you shine polarized light on it, will it be affected based on the polarization or will it be affected by the magnetization of the surface? Yeah, it's, it's called the Kerr effect. And I'll, I'll do a future video on that, but I haven't been able to see the effect myself yet because it's even weaker than the Faraday effect. But it will be coming up in a future video. Also, if you want one of these iron-on transfers that you can attach to your lab coat or clothing, uh, let me know. If you're already a, a contributor at Patreon, just send in your address. Make sure you sign up for this reward before the end of the month, and I'll mail this out to you. Uh, I also have extras, so we'll probably be doing another giveaway uh, sometime in the future. Okay, see you next time. Bye.